Hey everybody, the MMO50 here. You know, the Christmas season's right around the corner and before the Christmas season every year, my birthday comes around and feel free to send in a happy birthday when you see this video. But you know, I had some nice, uh, well, shall we say gifts from my relatives that since they didn't really know what I wanted for my birthday or Christmas, or at least they didn't think that they could do something individually that would be enough. I don't know how they're how they feel about it, but one reason or another I had enough money after my birthday to buy something I've been looking forward to for a very very long time. Now I'm going to go ahead and say this much that uh, <laughs> this video is pretty much going to be an unboxing. I've not done one of these before so please forgive the quality of the video and what have you as the lighting obviously can attest, but yeah, what are you going to do I suppose. So anyway, Right now, I have something in my position which I just spent a lot of money on, birthday money, mind you, and I do not regret it one bit, and I'm going to show you guys it right now. Get the camera here. Yes, you are seeing that properly. That is the 20th anniversary special edition Legacy Megazord from the Power Rangers. Yes, Legacy Edition. This is the one that just came out it is brand spanking new, has not been opened out of the box yet, and I'm going to share that unboxing experience with you, the fine folks at home. So, without any further ado, let's uh, get right in this here, and don't worry, I'll edit this all so that it's a lot more, shall we say, digestible. I'll spat, eat through the boring parts, which there might be a good number of. So, uh, to get us started here, I had a pair of scissors. Darn it, where did I put those darn things? You see, this is why I had to edit this stuff out, because otherwise it just gets completely messy. Uh, come over here. There they are. Had them over on the kitchen sink. What the heck? <sighs> Live, everybody. So, this is my first time getting a brand new Pegasaur toy in a long time. The last time I did, just for comparison, I got this Megazord toy. And uh, you'll forgive the arms there, they, without the little ties in there to keep them held down, they kind of have a tendency to fall out of their little socket, if you will. But yeah, the last time I bought a Megazord was when I bought this one, which was when they reissued the uh, Megazord. Uh, down here you see it's the Dino Megazord, apparently, even though everyone just knows it as the straight up Megazord. This is when they were first rebroadcasting the show with new special effects and other things like that that were kind of unnecessary for the show overall, let's be perfectly honest, but I want you to notice something here, something I just realized. Four plus years of age to play with. On the Legacy Edition, 15 plus. Be note, parents, you want to buy this for your kids? You may not want to because it's expensive for one, but for two, it's basically an adult collector's item. It's not something you can get on the cheap. Anyway. I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two versions, and let's just see one thing right here. The heft, the weight, is already very, very big in comparison. There's already a huge weight difference, so hold on while I get the ceiling tape down here. And as I break that tape, thousands of, fa of fanboys worldwide that all want their, pack their toys to be permanently mint-conditioned and sealed just cr simultaneously crap their pants. It's a thing, people, unfortunately. But I gotta open this thing to show you what it looks like, and I'll be darned if I got all the money, all the trouble to buy this thing, and I don't, don't even open it up. So, just the inside leaflet there. It's all cardboard, so let's open this up. Get a little bit of a better view as I open it out. It's a very nice box. You'll notice that unlike the other box, there isn't a window to see the Megazord in, so it's all one solid box all the way around, no window to see inside, and the packaging on the inside is cardboard, and oh my, I can tell already just by looking at this that this is absolutely lovely. Um, on the front here we have little sticker sheets and instructions. Uh, little ban no notice from Bandai here, it reads, Thank you for your purchase, Bandai wants to hear what you have to say. Visit www.research.net s MMPR 2013 and tell us what you think. Right there. Hold on just one second, people. I'll edit this part out. Don't worry about it. And we're back. Sorry about that, folks, but uh, family obligations. You know how it is. Also, while I'm still doing this stuff, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Joyous Kwanzaa, 
Happy holidays all around to anybody and everybody. Happy winter solstice to the pagan fr to my good pagan friends out there. Um, okay, so get this little thing of sticker sheet open. So obviously, I've done this on the other one so many times that I really don't need to know how to do the Megazord all over again. But I just want to open it up so I can get the sticker sheet out so I can apply stickers. You can tell I've never done this before. <laughs> okay, so right away on the sticker sheet, you have uh, a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers logo, a Power Rangers 20th anniversary logo. You can get okay, a close look right there. Then you have the individual Zord stickers. They're all nice and numbered. And if you look on the instruction pan manual, it actually tells you which stickers go where. Very helpful, very helpful. So you don't want to just toss these instructions out, especially if you're a diehard collector. So, now one thing right away that I noticed looking at this and looking into it is that a lot of the parts here are die cast metal, which means that it's, they're very heavy and very weighty. Uh, this sword, for instance, it's plastic, but it, it's much more solid and reflective. It looks more like metal than it does plastic. So a big difference from the other sword here. Uh, I'll save the full comparison for later. Got the Mastodon head, arms, and these arms are heavy by themselves. These have die cast metal in them, I can tell you already. Uh, let me see if I can get one of them out here so I can show you. See that right there? That's die cast metal, that's solid. It's, you hear that clicking? That's the shoulder joint. wrist and the stickers already on here are very very high quality stickers i mean they're shiny they're bright they're very uh they pop out against the black of the mastodon's arms and legs uh little cannon pieces here also the pterodactyl's feet then we pull out the biggest section which is the tyrannosaurus triceratops and saber tooth tiger portions and you can see here in the box he already comes out the Megazord does with the uh, uh, Pterodactyl and Tyrannosaurus already set up for Zord mode. So before we do go ahead and disassemble all these things and put all the stickers on here, let's just see how this all looks put together for the first time as the Megazord. So this arm, uh, no wait, this arm goes on the other side because if you look on the back of the diecast piece, there is a gap. Whereas on the front side, there is no gap for the die cast. So that's something I wasn't expecting really, but it's an interesting look. So get that arm on, this arm on, and it, it's, it's solid. It's very, very solid as a build. Uh, very well engineered, I think. Um, the Triceratops tail and the saber tooth tail folded in here. They're die cast as well, all metal. Uh, the legs here, the leg joints are metal. Uh, the foot pieces, and most of it are pink and, uh, not pink, uh, plastic. And there are no wheels on the back treads here. On the uh, other version that I have here, they have uh, moving wheels, but they're pretty static here. So take this, take the power sword, and it's a little snug getting it in there, so you have to wiggle it back and forth. Don't force it, but, you know, it's a little snug. And again, this is the very first time I'm unboxing this thing, so... Okay, so now we take the pterodactyl feet, which now become little compartments on the back. We'll just call those power cells. And they fit in nice and cookie. No. Sorry, that's my cat scratching at the carpet. <laughs> Gotta tell him no. So, eh. Got those little pieces there. Those are plastic, not metal. Uh, not for the Mastodon head, which a lot of times on the show, you don't really see the where the Mastodon head goes. It just kind of, it's kind of like Optimus Prime's trailer. It kind of just disappears into the ether, but put it on here for the show, and ah, there we go. And we have a Mastodon shield, and now the Megazord is all ready for battle, except he needs his decals. Also, another thing I should note, the Sabertooth Tiger's fangs here are bent up, 
if you look closely here, bent up like that, but they are still plastic, so you can still bend them down for when it's in its saber tooth tiger form. Cookie? No. Cat, cat again. So. I'm gonna go ahead and break each of these zords down into their individual pieces so I can put their stickers on. Give me a minute here, I'll edit this out, and then we'll come right back to it. See you in a bit. So guys, uh, hey again. Um, it's a little darker now, as you can tell. Um, hmm, much better, much more reflective. Anyway, uh, the stickers, as you can see, are all gone, so let's see about a little look-see here. The stickers aren't perfectly applied, but then again, this is me we're talking about, so perfection is far from the last thing we're going to expect in this, so let's be perfectly honest with ourselves. Um, Tyrannosaurus had some real interesting sticker problems, but I managed to figure that out. Uh, a lot of these stickers were professionally applied, the Mastodon and there, uh, but these little circles right here, those were me. Um, if you take a close look here, you might see little, you know, inconsistencies or variations between where the stickers are and where they're supposed to be, little slight off-center, off, uh, slightly skew. Uh, one thing I really wanted to kind of point out here, the tail pieces of the Saberton Tiger, oops, excuse me, sorry buddy, and the Triceratops are both, this one's a little stiff, on, honestly, uh, both of the tails on them are die cast metal, see the stickers there, and there, and one's right down the center there, and one on the head there, and uh, the pieces right here on the Macedon are die cast metal, uh, most of it's plastic. Legs of the Tyrannosaurus are metal, and thus so are the legs of the Megazord. Uh, the joints where the legs of the Mastodon become the arms are very, very stiff. Uh, so you're not going to get a whole... And they're very... They're hexagonal, so you're going to get, like, that range of motion out of them. So not very mobile. Uh, but overall, very well done in presentation. Um, let's see if I can get a better angle there. Uh... I know they're a little off-center and wonky a little bit, but that's what you get when you have, you know, me doing it. <laughs> okay, so, just for some comparison's sake, you get the 2011, I think it is, Power Rangers edition of the Megazord out here. And give me a second to disassemble this guy here, so get the die-cast all over here. Alrighty, as you can see here, the uh, Zord, the two Zords are all lined up here. Get a nice line up there. Now, something I wanted to kind of point out here is that not only with these die cast metal parts are these two Zords. Far more heavy. This is the new one. This is the re-edition of the 2011 one. But the uh, stickers on some of them look a bit different. See? There's the die-cast one up here. Here's the older one right there. Some of the stickers look a lot more shiny, and obviously with the die-cast metal parts, you have a lot more of a metallic sheen, obviously. But this plastic fangs here, slightly different. Just for comparison's sake, the plastic parts are fairly similar, but there's more color on this one right here than there. And uh, overall, not only does it feel heavier, it also feels a lot more sturdy. Look at the eyes, too. Uh, the die-cast one here, you can see the eyes are black with red shrouds around, with red centers. 
And this one is more just black slits. This is the other one. Um, also, the sticker here is peeling just a smidge, but that's me. That's all me. Um, the sticker design on this one is more metallic in the center, and then this one has a different design altogether. So, I'm not sure whether that's an intentional variation or if that's just a flaw in the printing, though. Could be either. The Triceratops, again, much more hefty because of its tail being completely metallic. Uh, you have the internal sticker there, again, more reflective than the older version, which is not as metallic. Uh, and you have the horn crest, which is dimmer on the... which is much dimmer on the die-cast version than it is on the other version. Uh, both of them don't have wheels on the bottom, they're solid, but on the die-cast, they're gray treads, and on the other one, it's all black underneath, with black treads, so... There's that. Oop. Our computer. Don't worry, I'll fix it in a second. Uh, okay, so there was that comparison. There's really not a whole lot of difference between those two. The, the differences here are mostly aesthetics. The pterodactyls are almost exactly the same. The only real difference you can make between the two is maybe the uh, uh, look at the plastic. It looks a little more refined on the new one. Uh, the sticker is a lot more shiny than this, than the old one. Uh, these are not the original editions of the Zords, mind you, these old ones. These are the 2011 re-edition, if I haven't made that clear. Uh, there's also a slight... This Pterodon's head is more with a red. This one is pink, the die-cast one, from the die-cast version. Uh, I can tell which is which, partially because of where I'm placing them. The uh, Mastodon, out of all of them, is the heaviest of all the Zords so far. And it has the most die cast to it. Uh, here's the die cast one. You can get a nice good look here. Its face is all plastic, but the die cast parts really show out here on the sides. They're really shiny. And again, the stickers much, much shinier and more reflective than the old version here. Uh, it's actually getting a little painful to hold it at this angle because it's so much heavier. Um, sad, to, sad to say, either that or I'm just a wimp. Also, when this Mastodon came out, there were no stickers for right here, but there are for on the die-cast version. So maybe a little more show accurate. Speaking of show accurate, just for comparison's sake, the Tyrannosaurus' his legs are all die-cast too. They're, except for the, these parts here, it's all die-cast on the thighs. And if you look closely, you can actually see the different uh, markings here on the tail, on the other side of the screw. On the other version, you don't have any of those markings on there. Uh, same mold, just new pieces. And uh, on the torso, no red stripe there. Diecast version, older version from 2011. Then you have the uh, difference on the back. You know, the diecast has a gray vent. This one has a black vent. Again, this is all semantics, but I just wanted to show you guys the differences for those of you who were curious. And again, stickers are much more reflective and metallic. Um, this sticker under here, I may have slightly misplaced a little far too down, too far down, but uh, it's a bit bigger than this sticker in here, which is, as you can see, not only as reflective, but much smaller. So, and uh, again, Die-cast metal part, parts here. The weight is much higher. And another big point of comparison is that, if you can see here, the die-cast T-Rex is so front-heavy, you have to almost fight with it to keep it standing upright. You have to sort of tap back on his tail, because if he's leaning just far enough forward, he falls flat on his face. So even if I, and I can't push his legs any more forward, even if I push them back, it doesn't help matters, it just makes him stand even more forward. So, the old one has that problem, but the new one, lean him too far forward, he'll fall forward as well, but he falls forward at a much lower angle. So, right about there is where he'll start to fall if you don't manage him. Also, the joint on the head is much tighter on the die-cast version on this. In fact, all the die-cast versions, along with being heavier, uh, 
are generally a lot tighter in their presentation. This is a more, it's a little bit of a click, if you can hear it. It's a slight click, but also a little more smooth. And uh, that's really all there is for the direct comparisons of the individual Zords. Now, I'm gonna, s now, for, their for the accessory here, the power sword, there really is no comparison. This is the die-cast version of the sword. This is the 2011 version of the sword. It's floppy plastic, you know, it bends like really, e really, really easy. So I just keep it in the box most of the time. Uh, this one though, it does have a tiny, tiny bit of flexibility to it, but if you flex it hard enough, it will break. So I would not recommend that. Plus it's shiny, metallic. It, it's probably a very light metal or very, you know, metallic plastic. Uh, so it is, it is somewhat durable, but uh, I wouldn't be bending it every which way. Uh, and again, putting it in the Megazord's fist, it's a lot tighter on the diecast version. Maybe that's just because it's metal on metal or I don't know. Maybe it's plastic on metal. I'm not entirely sure. So, let's get a direct comparison of the individual Megazord forms, and we're gonna have a little speed montage here to do this proper. So, first we're gonna do the Megazord of the, uh, ninth, of the 2011 version. So, ah, you got that going. <clears throat> so, we've now got both versions of the Megazord here. The die-cast and the 2011 re-release. Uh, never having the original Megazord myself, the one from the 90s, uh, I can't compliment on how faithful of a recreation these are to that. But uh, I have to imagine that um, as excited and as absolutely overwhelmed as I am right now with both of these versions, uh, this one particularly, um, I uh, have to say that it's an absolutely amazing moment for me just as a fan because having a piece of my childhood that I never thought I'd be able to have, let alone two different variations of it, and if they ever make like a 25th anniversary edition of this Megazord or like a... 40th, 50th anniversary edition of this Megazord, you better bet I'm gonna buy it again. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lobbying for them to make every piece out of die-cast metal just to see if I can get, like, one entirely metal, uh, literally metal Megazord, but, uh, going back to the common theme of tonight, just the weight. I mean, this one, the die-cast feels obviously much heavier, but it's just little tiny aesthetic details. I mean, the metal parts not only look shiny, if you can get a good look here. Not only do they look shiny, but they also look more detailed. 
possibly because of that shininess. I'm not entirely sure how to categorize that. It's very hard to check it out, but the, the stickers, again, look higher quality and more metallic, uh, higher detail. Oh, hi, Megazord's crotch. Oh, boy. But, uh, look at that face. I mean, that's... Right now, the only thing going through my mind is Megazord activated. So, I played the, uh, uh, music in a montage, or not montage as a, while I was speeding up that footage, but yeah, just the whole, the whole nostalgia of it all, really, is coming back to me, and, uh, something I really want to bring up here, the metal, the die-cast version's joints are stiffer, in that they take a little more effort to move, but they also feel more sturdy, for obvious reasons, they're metal on, it's metal on plastic, but it just feels more solid and much more uh, dependable, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not, and this little, little joints here, much more sturdy, again, plastic on metal. The use of die cast in this case, I think, was a well-timed thing, and Honestly, if I had to say to anybody, you know, if you are a fan of the Power Rangers, if you're even, if you have someone who you know is a fan, this is a great birthday or Christmas gift, uh, especially with the new Dragon Zord coming out in February 2014. I never owned the original Dragon Zord, nor have I, uh, nor have they ever re-released it until February 2014, so I will be buying that and I will be reviewing it. Uh, I will probably never own one of the original Dragon Zords, but I'm okay with that because the new one looks to be of a much higher quality, better articulation and everything. Uh, just look it up. I'm sure you can find pictures and uh, already some people who have put in their two cents about it. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was long and rambly, but uh, my advice, I mean... This one's about 70 plus dollars, uh, depending on where you buy it from and how much sales tax is. And if you live outside the United States, you may have to pay uh, fees for it for more. But um, if you're a big fan of the Power Rangers or Super Sentai or whichever, uh, definitely consider getting this. It is a quality uh, production. The mold work looks great. It's all well put together. The die cast parts look great and it's solid as all crap literally and metaphorically um it's it just feels right now this 2011 version it's good don't get me wrong but if i honestly had if i knew that this was going to be made i wouldn't have bought this one i'm being completely honest here because this was when they were reissuing it and i had no idea if or when they were going to redo this guy again redo the big guy again so i really had a feeling in my head like, you know, I had to own this version. And now that this one's come out, I'm thinking I may give this version to a needy child as part of a Christmas present. So, I mean, I have some nephews who are big Power Rangers fans. They may enjoy it. And I'll enjoy this for years to come. I'll keep it in the box most of the year, and then I'll break it out every so often. But once I get that Dragon Sword, you'd better bet I'm going to put it and this together. And if they release a version of Titanus for these guys, you better bet I'm getting Titanus and I'm forming the Ultra Zord. I am coming and storming into this place with the Ultra Zord. Sorry, I'm geeking out here. Actually, no, wait, I'm not sorry because this is awesome and I refuse to hear anything from anybody otherwise that it is not awesome. That being said, I hope all of you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped influence your opinions. Apologies once again for the lighting and what have you, but I'm limited resources uh, in any event. Have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a joyous Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you celebrate, solstice, you pay, all you paganists out there, whatever. Uh, or whatever the heck any of you like to do for the holidays. Even if you aren't religious, I hope you have a wonderful New Year's. And if you are celebrating with somebody, all the more power to you. Uh, in any event, thank you for sharing this memory with me. This has been a wonderful uh, birthday present, as wonderful as I could ever get. And I think I will enjoy it for many, many years to come. And I am not in the least bit disappointed with this as a purchase. As expensive as it is, and as much 
detail and quality as there is in it. I cannot fault anyone for wanting this because I wanted it myself. So if you want this, go and get it. I don't know how long they're going to be selling it for. And if you want that Dragon Zord and you want the Megazord together in the same room, get them. Just get them. Anyway, this is the M50 signing out. Happy holidays to you all.